Hello, welcome back to another training video today. Today's topic is going to be a little bit different as we're not really going to be discussing fire ground skills. It's going to be more of the rescue skills, uh, EMS skills that we would be using during an active shooter, uh, MCI type of an incident. Uh, first things I want to talk about is the equipment that we would be taking in uh, and our PPE level. Generally on an EMS call, we're going to be having eye protection and at least gloves on for our BSI. With these types of incidents, that can change. Uh, we might need N95, we might need structural uh, PPE, especially if there's fire, smoke, what other conditions are in, present inside the building. Uh, we might need ear protection, especially if uh, the police are actively firing and, and there's an, an incident still going on. So it's a really evolving, unknown, undetermined situation. I'm gonna say, for the sake of the argument, we're gonna say it's just a eyes and glove type of a situation, but always be ready to take those necessary precautions for other items that are going to be needed for PPE. Uh, for me, I would just be going in like this uh, into one of these incidents. Again, as long as there's not smoke, uh, dust, debris, any other types of particulates in the air, uh, this general type of setup uh, for PPE would be uh, totally fine for these types of situations but always be ready and be able to identify situations that require different PPE. Uh, for us, during the day, we have fire shirts or uniforms that we're wearing. Volunteers at night, you're gonna be responding from home and you might just be in normal clothes. That being said, you're gonna to need to have something on that identifies you from everyone else in this environment because we're gonna be going into a potentially a school, business, uh, mall, whatever that might be, that type of environment you're gonna to need to identify yourself compared to everyone else. That may, Maybe it's a safety vest, maybe it's a light coat, maybe it's whatever situation might warrant. If it's winter, uh, a bunker coat might be uh, able to, to suffice for that. So always be prepared, make sure that you have an idea on what you would be wearing. Uh, if, if you can, throw a t-shirt in your locker, uh, just so you have something on uh, in your disposal to be ready for these types of situations that you can throw on and identify yourself on these scenes. Uh, the equipment that we're gonna take in, just a quick review on our casualty response kit. This one was pulled directly from Central, so it hasn't been completely gone through, but you can see the, the tourniquets that are on here still have plastic wrap. Uh, I would suggest taking the plastic wrap off. You could imagine having your gloves on, uh, blood, sweat, whatever else, and then trying to open these up. Uh, not great, not ideal. So we want to be able to be as quick and rapid as we can be. So make sure that the plastic wrap is off of all of your equipment, that everything is ready to go. Uh, just a couple more things that are in here. You do have scissors, gloves. One thing that I've added is a carabiner, and we'll kind of talk about why I've added that in a little bit here. You do have a mega mover. We do have some trauma dressings and a couple more tourniquets inside along with some triage sheets, some wrap, and then we do have some more compressed gauze in here as well. So always a good idea to go through, look and see what you have available to you in this kit. Understand where it's located, understand when you would use what pieces. Uh, a couple more things that we do have some N95s, and we also have some, some chest. For this next portion, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover how we actually assess and evaluate a patient that we're gonna come across. So upon entry, again, there's a hundred different ways that this could play out, but typically what's gonna happen is you and your partner will be paired up with probably two police officers as a security detail, uh, and you're gonna be the rescue team. So you've identified your security force that's gonna get you in and follow you around and protect you throughout that warm zone that you're gonna be operating in. You and your partner are gonna be directed uh, as part of the hall boss is gonna tell you where that patient is and where to start clearing people. So you're gonna be directed to this is your patient from the hall boss. You and your partner get there, and the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is start assessing the patient. This is not a, a long triage. This is a very quick down and dirty. We need to remove people from this environment, get them out to the triage center outside. So I'm just assessing this patient. Is this a viable patient to take out and start triaging? Uh, if they're uh, a green, you know, the walking wounded, uh, 
they can walk out on their own. So that doesn't mean I run in, me and my partner, and we find somebody that can walk out on their own and we walk out with them. We can find the next patient and that patient can walk out with us while we drag this other patient out. So just always be thinking about what needs to happen and, and where you need to be going and how many people that we can get out effectively and efficiently. So I, I come across our first patient. First thing we're gonna do is gonna be checking for breathing, bleeding, uh, just assessing them. Big, big, big thing to do is actually get hands on. We need to do sweeps. So the first thing that we're gonna start doing is just start sweeping. You and your partner are gonna be doing this, literally kind of clawing at the patient. And we wanna just kind of feel and see if we're getting any blood. Uh, and when we sweep with our hands, we wanna kind of do this with our hands once we touch them, because we wanna see, am I feeling that kind of that soapy-ness uh, that blood would actually be on your hands. Because if we're in a blacked out environment, we're not able to see very well, we're gonna need to be able to feel it. So I was just kind of doing one of these sweeps, feeling, going to the next. And it's super important to get this, this uh, check to see if we're finding any bleeding, we're finding any broken arms, uh, parts of the body, uh, cuts, wound shot, or gunshots, anything like that. But also, as we're feeling, all of a sudden we might feel something that's suspicious, so what you want to do is pin it to the person, because I found something right here that just seems not right. Pin it to the person, I look, and it is a gun. So what I do is I just hold it up against that person with all my weight. If you want, you need to lay on them, whatever it is that you need to do to keep that there. This is a patient that's unconscious, but if they're awake, poses different issues. But we want to pin that to them, let our security detail know. Once the security detail that is with us knows and they're able to help us secure this weapon, we're able to get it away from them. We don't know if this person's good, bad, what. They're just an unconscious person with a weapon on them. Our safety, our security detail, the safety of everything needs to be considered as to what the overall scene looks like. So we need to pin those, secure them, get them off that patient. We can't have patients going into triage with weapons on them. We need to ensure that they've been cleared, We've assessed them, and we're only pulling out patients that aren't gonna be posing any threats to anybody else. In these scenes, we don't know who the good person is or who the bad person is. So we need to make sure that we're doing a very good job of doing those assessments. So as we're assessing, we might roll them over, do a quick assessment on the back, up in the crotch and the groin area, just to see any of those areas that bleeding is gonna be a big problem. If we have bleeds or uh, big wounds on arms, we can do is take a tourniquet. <clears throat> so if we find any wounds to these arms, legs that aren't high up, what we're able to do is take one of our tourniquets, place it on, Always making sure that we have the windlass turned out so we can still use it. It's important that we get this as tight as we can without cinching down. Once we have it on there tight, we go ahead and cinch that down. Lock it into place, and then we're ready to go. It always needs to be about two or three inches above the wound, uh, especially in these types of situations that we're just trying to do load and goes, get out as fast as we can. Put it up as high as possible. Get it up as high as you can, see that the bleeding has stopped, then you're good to go. The only things that we're really doing in this environment is assessing, clearing of weapons, and stopping any of those major bleeds. If we can stop a major bleed, that part's done. We're gonna get this person out and out to triage. We don't really wanna be in this environment longer than we need to. We wanna get this patient out into triage so they can be further assessed and taken care of. And then hopefully transported as quick as possible. All right, once you and your partner have assessed uh, the patient, evaluated them, ensured that any bleeding has been stopped, that they're a viable patient that needs to be removed, uh, they're clear of weapons, the next part is they're unconscious, we need to get them out. You have, more than likely, it's gonna be a two-person team that you have. So as we know, bigger patients are gonna be difficult to move on a mega mover with just two people, at least in the traditional ways of what we usually do. 
So again, bringing up why I have the carabiner on that triage bag, what you want to do is once the patient's ready to be loaded, you and your partner will work on rolling the patient, getting the magnum over underneath, rolling them back on top of the magnum over. Once they're on it, what we're going to do is we're going to take this carabiner and we're going to go ahead and hook these loops around the legs. And what we're doing is we're almost making like a carrying strap that's going to go ahead and cinch down around the waist of this person. So as we go ahead and we lift them, you and your partner both are up here and we start dragging, they're not gonna slide off the end of this. So that's really why we're doing that, is be able to make this as efficient as possible. Lock them in with that carabiner. They're not gonna slide off the back. And then you and your partner, are just gonna drag your patient right out to triage. All right, one of the last skills that we're gonna cover is wound packing. Uh, when an injury occurs very high up on an extremity, let's say up in the shoulder area, uh, or high up on the thigh, and a spot where I can't get a tourniquet on it. Uh, we need to do wound packing, which is basically packing the wound full of gauze to try to stop that bleeding through pressure. Now, this doesn't work in chest cavities uh, or areas like that. You're gonna have to try to use your uh, occlusive wound seals. But for those areas that we can get some pressure points in, like I said, up on the shoulders, thighs, uh, joints, uh, that can't take a tourniquet, wound packing is going to be the way to go. So we do carry some little rolls of gauze in our med bags. So kind of show those. And then we also have some orange hemorrhage control packets as well. I'll show what those look like here. So this is the material that we have available to us. So this is my budget wound, uh, leg, arm, whatever it is. You can see, got a knife, bullet, wound, whatever it is that that injury is. I need to try to get in here. So my first step is going to be go ahead and clear it out, try to get the wound cleaned as much as I can, try to see where it's coming from. And what I wanna do is if I can locate a vein uh, or a source of where the blood's coming from, I want to apply pressure to that right away. With these little mini gauze uh, rolls, especially if it's a wound that's this big, this whole thing would probably fit right in there. So what you want to do is just jam it in and hold pressure on it. And if that's enough, you can go ahead and start wrapping it. The next move might be to just, maybe it can fit some more in. So what you're doing is you're just always holding pressure on that and just putting as much packing into that wound as we can. So you're just feeding in as much as you can until it can't take any more. And you've got a nice solid wound pack full of gauze that's gonna hold pressure on that cut vein, artery, whatever it might be, and hopefully stop the bleeding. From there, we'll go ahead, and you're probably just gonna go ahead and leave that nice tight roll right on the top. All right, once we've packed with the gauze, we've wrapped uh, as best we can, what we can do is we can take our rolled gauze, quick clot, pull this out as well. Now this can also be used for wound packing or just rolling. So once that we have that on there, we can go ahead and just keep rolling. And once we get to that wound, we just kind of do that turn over the wound. And again, that's all about getting as much pressure on that wound as we can. Pressure is what's going to stop that bleeding and keep it from coming out. Roll the rest of the gauze on top. And then just tuck it in. Try to keep it from coming undone. And that's really a nice tight wound packing then right there. And that would be how we use our rolled gauze, our quick clot EMS. Once I've got my gauze on, you can go ahead and make those turns over the wound. Try to tighten it down. 
wrap it up as best we can. And I'm going to leave a little excess on there. From here, what we can do is we can take this wrap and over the top of the wound. through, tighten it down. We want it tight as it can be. And then you're just going to go ahead and keep wrapping and unrolling as we go. You can put turns over it as well, and that's just going to help really cinch it down in that spot right there. And go ahead and lock it in at the end. And we're not going to pull that dressing off. That dressing is going to stay on. We only add more if this is going to start bleeding through, uh, ensuring that our pressure is getting as tight as it can be. Uh, it might have to be reevaluated and tightened down as, as things progress, um, and this might loosen a little bit, and more pressure might need to be added and tightened around this as well. So. That's really how you're going to go ahead and wound packing. It's all about getting as much in as we can. Once that's been established, we're going to wrap the outside, put some gauze on the top of that wound to try to, again, soak up as much blood as we can, get some clotting to happen, and then tighten it down as best we can. We want that pressure on there to really stop that flow of blood from coming out. So it's like making your own tourniquet, basically. So that's really how that process goes. Um, really the skills that I want you guys to practice with uh, during this drill is going to go ahead and make sure that we know how to do our patient assessments. So go ahead, do those sweeping, feeling for blood, uh, checking for any wounds, uh, applying a tourniquet. So applying a tourniquet onto the dummy, applying a tourniquet onto uh, your partner, applying a tourniquet onto yourself. Uh, it's always good skills to go through and do that. Uh, make sure that we are familiar and always good review to do that. And then lastly, go ahead, uh, excuse me, do the patient packaging on the mega mover, work on dragging them around with your partner. Uh, using that carabiner to kind of make that diaper wrap around their legs. Uh, and then lastly, go ahead and, and do some wound packing on some of the cheap little pool girls that I have for you using your little mini rolls of gauze that will be available to you at your stations. So thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.